Air India is reinventing itself. As their mega transition continues, I think looking at their bog standard economy experience is a great way to check in on progress. So let's get into it. Welcome to Delhi. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid for my flight or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. I think that the world needs a bit more honest travel content these days. So I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well, all without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge and I self-fund my trips to be sure I get a true experience. And then I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. The amount of roadside construction going on in Delhi, well, I guess Mumbai too. Actually, okay, the amount of roadside construction going on across India is mind-boggling. I swear sometimes you can drive for what seems like miles and only see roadside barriers like these. My drive from the Andaz Delhi to Terminal 3 is technically a very short one, but it takes around 10 to 15 minutes depending on traffic. So, I had long haul and short haul experiences on Air India around a year ago, both linked above and below now. I've also got a long haul flight booked with them for next year. So this short flight today is a nice status check of sorts on what is becoming the new Air India. Also linked above and below now is my India playlist, which by the end of 2023 should have around 25 trip reports and hotel reviews in it. Anyway, let's get on with it. To my knowledge, all Indian airports have identification checks prior to entering the terminals. At major airports, there will be signage and wait times for each door. You must have your ID, of course, but also your boarding pass. Outside of the terminal, there are self-check-in kiosks to print off your boarding pass if you don't have it with you already. Terminal 3, where we are now, was opened in 2010 and is the 8th largest terminal in the world. The terminal is part of a much larger plan to revamp the airport. By the end of this year, if not already by the time this video is published, Terminal 1 is meant to reopen after extensive renovations and expansion, and there's also a Terminal 4 somewhere on the horizon as well. Considering I already had my boarding pass before entering the terminal, it was just a quick bag drop and then on to security. If you'd like to know more about the founding history of Air India and their current ownership transition, please check out my earlier videos, which go into quite a bit of detail about that. In a nutshell, Air India is now jointly owned by the Tata Group, the Indian conglomerate that produces everything from bottled water to cars to the Taj Hotel brand, with a 74.9% share, along with their partner Singapore Airlines, which now holds 25.1% of the new Air India. Note that Air India and Vistara are merging and Vistara will cease to exist as will Air Asia India, which will be folded into Air India Express. On the way to the gate, I wanted to check on the Air India Domestic Lounge quickly just to see how it compared to the last time I was here when it was just a little bit gross. Happy to report that while it is still the same interior, things certainly are better taken care of. Notably, the fabric chairs are no longer sticky. I'd say that's a pretty big win.
Let's head towards the gate and talk about the latest news, focusing on their new livery and logo, and their new cabin offerings, which will begin rolling out in mid-2024. The new livery is bold. I'll be honest, while I surely expected a new logo, I do wish that they kept a bit of that old charm in the new livery. Let me know what you think about the design in the comments. For me, I think I'm going to hold judgment until I see it in person. At the time of writing this, their first 737 MAX and A350 had just rolled out with the new scheme. Also revealed, we have four newly appointed cabins. First Class, which is honestly more like Business Class Plus, and then Business Class, Premium Economy, and Economy. For the latter three, this is a massive improvement. For Business Class, possibly one of the largest improvements ever when you consider their 777s now and the general condition of their long-haul Business Class cabins. I just hope it doesn't take a decade to roll all of this out. This is not our aircraft, but I definitely thought that it was, and you know what they say, it's the thought that counts. Mainline Air India currently has 121 aircraft, but when you add in Vistara, Air India Express, and Air Asia India, the total comes to around 235. They also have a total of now over 500 new aircraft on order, consisting of 230 A320 family aircraft, 190 737 MAX family, 40 A350s, 20 787-9s, and 10 777 9s out of all of this though, honestly, the most interesting thing to dive into, I think at least, is how they're going to use those aircraft, since I don't think their intentions are really quite clear yet. The way I see it, there are three distinct possibilities. The first is honestly the least exciting, in which Delhi would become the fortress hub of all fortress hubs, and every other city would just be secondary. The second possibility would be taking a page from Indigo using their four corner strategy in which they would feed traffic through Delhi, Mumbai, Bengaluru, and Calcutta, depending on which direction your originating flight was coming from. The third and I think most probable scenario would be creating mega hubs in Delhi and Mumbai while simultaneously expanding their presence as much as possible throughout all of India's second tier cities. But only time will tell with this one. Okay, let's get to the gate. My ultimate pet peeve about some airports in India is how early they board. The boarding time for this 52 minute flight was a full hour prior to the scheduled departure time. I got to the gate 65 minutes before departure and half of the passengers were already on board. It's just so much wasted time for everyone. As for today's flight stats, we departed 8 minutes early and landed 13 minutes early on this 337 mile hop, which took us up to 30,000 feet. If you support the content that I've been putting out on the channel, or just honest travel content in general, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with all your friends. Those are the three easiest ways that you can tell YouTube that this video is worth your time. For anyone interested in supporting, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks very much for watching today. Stepping on board our 13-year-old A320, there were a bunch of smiley crew greeting passengers, and then you'll get smacked in the face. Smacked in the face by the Jolly Rancher red seat covers, of course. I never flown Air India in economy before, and holy moly was this a wake-up call. I had an exit row seat for today's flight, and it seems like the seats have been fairly recently recovered. Either that, or they've had some serious deep cleaning. Also, nothing slimline here at all, so they were actually really comfortable.
From afar, I never noticed before how detailed the colorful patterns are on the fabric. Despite the new seat covers, there was definitely some deep cleaning that would have served them pretty well on many of the other plastic surfaces. The manual safety demonstration began and we pushed back. Normally, I'd leave my comments about the service on board for the end of the video, but I think it deserves mentioning of just how good the service was on this flight. On short flights, there are really only two things that I look for in crew. First, is it apparent that they enjoy their job? Are they just happy to be here today? And second, how much do they prioritize passengers over just about anything else, like personal conversations? In this case, they clearly enjoyed their jobs and were fully focused on passengers and engaging with them the entire flight. All right, let's get up in the air. The spool up, take off, and airport stats are coming up next. Our routing today seemed to be an easy peasy straight shot to the southwest, crossing into Rajasthan soon after takeoff. For such a short domestic flight, I was expecting a drink service and probably not much more, and frankly would have been okay with that, but was very surprised to get a full cold meal. Okay, maybe really a, a full cold snack. There was just the vegetarian choice, coming with a box of juice, bottle of water, chocolate bar, and a sandwich. Paneer really is an easy way just to make everybody happy. Who doesn't like paneer? Alright, time to sit back, digest, and enjoy the beautiful desert views as we begin our final descent into Udaipur's small regional airport.
So I'm not really sure what I was expecting on this flight. Surely I knew the airline would not have fully reinvented itself yet, of course. But I was hoping to see some small positive changes, and I do believe that I did. From the Vistar integration, to the legal battles ahead, to the hundreds of aircraft to come online, to the retrofitting and repainting of all of their current aircraft, and a whole lot more. The journey to reinventing Air India is just beginning, but it does seem that things are going in the correct direction. I really do hope that you enjoyed this trip report today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my incredible India content coming in the next weeks. I'll see you next time from the fabled Taj Lake Palace in Udaipur. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.